to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. There are some words in the Bible that are just so unique and so outstanding that when you hear that word, it elicits some kind of natural response. One of those words is the word, Amen. How many times have you been hit in worship, in assembly gathered to worship God, and you heard somebody say, Amen? And boy, that was the right thing that needed to be said at the right time. Well, what does the word, Amen, mean? Where does amen come from? Is that something that ought to be said? And more importantly, what does the Bible teach on this idea? We're so glad that you joined us for our study today of this unique word in Scripture. And we want you to stop for just a moment with whatever you're doing and find your Bible. Have it handy because we're going to look to the Word of God in our study today to see what God has to say. Here's what matters. Paul asked, what does the scripture say? Romans 4 verse 3, and that's what we're asking today. And so have your Bible and let's look at it together today. As always, we want you to know that our lessons are being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area, they'd love for you to stop by, visit their assembly. They'd be happy to sit down with you and discuss the Word of God. If you've got a question, uh, maybe something you're struggling with, they'd love to open God's Word and study the Bible with you. Maybe you'd like to know more about the plan of salvation, the church, why we worship the way we do, how a Christian should live. Visit their assembly. You'll find people there who love God and are concerned about lost souls. And friend, I assure you, here at the Gospel of Christ, we want to help men and women go to heaven. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous 500 plus lessons, please log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From that website, you can access all of our information free of charge. We've got video lessons, audio lessons, questions and answers, transcripts, written material, just a good host of Bible study material, and it's all free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of any of these lessons, we make them available free. Just go to our website, fill out a media request form. Uh, you can do a digital download, or if you need a hard copy of that, on DVD or CD. We'll send that to you free of charge. We even cover the shipping. Friend, our main aim is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we're concerned about the souls of men and women. Let's turn our attention now to the subject we have at hand. The word, the amazing, powerful word, Amen. What do we know about this word? How's it used in the Bible? How should it be used today? Here are some interesting facts about the word amen itself. Amen has been called the best known word in human speech, regardless of the language. It's kind of like saying the word Coke. Anywhere you go in the world, you say Coke, people understand that. Anywhere you go in the world, amen is one of the most universal words, regardless of language. Did you know it's the last word in the Bible? Revelation 22, verse number 21. Mo, did you know that most books in the New Testament end with the word amen? In fact, it's used in the Greek language 129 times in the New Testament. It occurs 77 times in the English Bible. It's a well-known and well-used word in the Bible. Well, How's it used? What else do we know about it? Did you know that the word amen is used to describe the character of Jesus? Listen to this. Revelation 3 verse 14 says this, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, listen to this, 
These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, Revelation 3.14. And so when we speak about Jesus' character, He's described as the Amen. Did you know God's character is also described by the word Amen? Listen to Isaiah 65, verse number 16. The Bible says this, So that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself, the God of truth, the Hebrew word there is, Amen. And he who swears in the earth shall swear by the God of truth or the God of Amen. And so again, God Himself is used by the description, Amen. Now friend, as we think about this study and this unique lesson today, please understand, this is not an attempt to elicit amens during a sermon or a Bible class. We're not saying that in and of itself is wrong, but that's not what a study like this is designed to do. This is a word that each one of us uses probably pretty regularly. It's a word that occurs real frequently in Scripture, and it is a word that has a rich an encouraging background for the child of God, and we need and want that type of encouragement. All right, so where does the word amen come from? Like the word baptism, amen is a transliteration of a Greek word, which means simply this. The Greek word baptizo, instead of translating that into an English equivalent, they just simply took the Greek characters, Greek letters, and made a whole new word. Baptizo into baptism. Well, it's kind of the same way with amen. The Greek word is amen. They took those same letters, Greek letters, which are equivalent to A-M-E-N, and they made a new word, amen. The Greek word simply means this, that which is firm, uh, solid, rock solid, that which is trustworthy. This word originates from a Hebrew word meaning to uh, build up or support. A support or a buttress, something that builds something up is kind of the idea. Uh, it's defined by Greek lexicons to mean firm. Often you'll hear uh, the word truly, certainly, Absolutely. Sometimes it'll be translated, may it be so. It's an absolute solid word, if we can use that. In the Gospel of John, it may be translated as um, verily, verily. John 3, verse 5, verily, verily, I say unto you. Or some versions will say, truly, truly. Kind of like say, you can take this to the bank. Might be an expression we might use. The Holy, Fe Holy Spirit kind of helped us define this word in its use in a couple of parallel passages. You know, I always think when I want to define a word or a concept, I want to let the Bible be its own best commentary or definition on that. And with the word Amen, God defines it for us. Let me give you an example. Uh, Mark 9, verse number 1. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, that's the Greek word Amen, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of you that stand here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God with power. Now, in the parallel account of that, in Luke 9, 27, in that same verse, the Holy Spirit used a synonymous word. Listen to Luke 9, 27. Jesus said in this account, But I tell you truly, that's the Greek word aletheos, truth. Solid is the idea. But I tell you a solid truth. There are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 9, verse number 27. And so, amen is used as a parallel to something when it says verily, we're talking about a solid truth. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20, it is a parallel to the word yes. What is amen mean? Yes, absolutely. Truly, that's solid. It's something we can take to the bank. One of the more interesting uses of the word amen is its very first use in Scripture. 
The first time amen is used in Scripture, it is, to say the least, a very unique and very unusual scenario. Open your Bible with me to Numbers chapter 5. I want you to see the first use in the Old Testament and all the Bible of the word Amen. As we look to this context, we have a woman here. This woman is going to say Amen as she's agreeing to God's law and giving consent. This verse is found in Numbers chapter 5. Notice verses 20 through 22. Of this woman who has a ceremony a cleansing, uh, verse 20, but if you've gone astray while under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself and someone, some man other than your husband has lain with you, then the priest shall put the woman under the oath of the curse. He shall say to the woman, The Lord make you a curse, an oath among your people, when the Lord makes your thigh rot and your belly swell, and may this water that causes the curse go in your stomach and make your belly swell and your thigh rot. Now watch this. And the woman shall say, Amen, so be it. Here you've got a case where has this woman committed adultery? Has she done something wrong? Is she uh, clean? And the priest says, okay, here's what we're going to do. God's going to back this up. He's told us what to do. If you drink this water and your thigh rots and your belly swells, you've done wrong. If not, you're okay. You know what she says? Amen, so be it. What was she saying? That woman was saying, I agree to God's law. And I'm giving consent to punishment if I've lied. She is acknowledging, let God be true and His word and every man a liar. And thus, amen here was used as an, an oath of truthfulness or a surety or placing one stamp of approval on that idea. Well, what about us today? When we say amen, when we say amen, we're saying yes. Before God, I agree with that. I believe that to be true. I want that to be so. We are consenting to teaching, confirming our faith in Scripture, and we're requesting that, or asking that something be true or something that God said will happen in each one of our lives. Well, is there a correct way? How then should the word amen be used? It first, like any other biblical term, it first must be used intelligibly. That is, with the understanding. It's not just some rote word. You, somebody says something, you didn't quite hear what they said, and you shout out amen. That isn't the way it works. It's got to be used with the understanding. How do we know that? Paul said that's the way our worship ought to be. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, I'll sing with the Spirit and I'll sing with the understanding, I'll pray with the Spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding. And so, if I didn't hear what was said, or I'm not sure of something, everybody else says amen, and I say amen, well, friend, that's not the correct way to do it. It's got to be done with understanding first. Secondly, it ought to come from the heart. It ought to, we ought to really mean and want that to be the case. John 4, verse 24, God is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit, in spirit and in truth. It's got to be guided by the Word of God, but it's also got to come from the heart. If I don't really believe that, or I'm not sure of that, or my life's not being lived that way, friend, I better not dare say amen to that. But if I do, then from the heart, may it be so. God grant that is the idea. Then it must be said, amen should always be said in faith. Look in your Bible in Hebrews chapter 11 with me. If I don't understand something, or I don't know what the Scriptures teach on that, or it's not out of good faith, then I can't say amen to that. Look in Hebrews chapter 11. Look at what the Bible says in verse number 6. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Uh, you read the last verse of Romans 14, whatever's not of faith is sin. And so I need the conviction. Yes, that's true. If I don't know that, well, I sure don't want to put a stamp of approval on that idea. You know, amen, it ought to also be uttered in hope. There ought to be a sense, when we use the word amen, there ought to be a sense of maybe uh, hope, or expectancy with that. Here's what we mean by it. 
Look in Revelation chapter 1. When I use the word amen, there's, there's a, a, a tinge of hope, anticipation, and expectancy with that as well. Look at Revelation 1, verse number 18. Jesus said, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Can't you hear the, 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 that sense of hope and expectancy and anticipation? I was, alive, I was dead. I'm alive and I'll be alive forevermore. And then in the background, amen. Kind of the idea of, isn't that great almost? That's the way we want it. Then, don't, here's one that I hope you'll listen real carefully to. Don't say amen unless you plan on doing something also. It's not... Listen real carefully. I don't mean this to come across the wrong way. But I think sometimes, if we're not careful, it's real easy to say amen in services and then not go out and do anything. Don't say amen unless you plan on following that up with a changed or right life. Look in your Bible in Deuteronomy 27. Deuteronomy chapter 27 I want you to look at what the Scripture says in Deuteronomy 27, verse number 26. Deuteronomy 27, verse 26 teaches us an amen must be followed by the right action. Curse, God says, is the one who does not confirm all the words of this law by observing them, and all the people shall say amen. What were they saying amen to? Moses, you're right. God's law is right. His law is true, and we're going to do what the law says. And so when we think about the idea of amen, amen is almost like a nudge pushing us out to not only agree with that idea, but to do something as well. Well, let's think about this. What then should we put our amen Upon What are some things that would be good to say amen to? Christians should have the attitude of amen toward God's law in our lives. We mentioned Deuteronomy 27. We just read that last verse. But every time God will say, the blessing if you do this, amen. The curse if you'll do this, and the people say amen. It's a blessing if you do this, and the people say amen, and the curse, and again, the people say amen. What do I learn from that? I ought to have the attitude. I'm not talking about necessarily saying that all the time. But I ought to have the attitude of, so be it. That's the way it ought to be towards God's law in my life. The Scripture says I need to live like this if I'm going to be right with God, and I want to do that. Amen. The Scripture says I ought not to do these things, and I don't want to do them. Amen. That's the mindset and the attitude is, this is what God says. That settles it, so be it. Secondly, as it relates to the idea of amen, we ought to have that attitude of amen in worship and praise of Almighty God. Would you open your Bible to 1 Chronicles 16? I want you to see that this is a, a mindset and an attitude that ought to pervade our thoughts. During worship, look at First Chronicles 16. I want you to look in verse number 36. Look at what the people say here. First Chronicles 16, verse 36. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Now notice, and all the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. What were they saying Amen to? The goodness of God and their attitude in worship. When I gather in worship, I ought to have that attitude, this is what God wants. So be it. Let it be true. Let's give God our best is the mindset. What's another time or attitude we ought to have about amen? Friend, when God's Word is read and preached, our attitude should be amen. We ought to want to stand behind, stand on, and clearly hear 
the Word of God preached. Let me show you a powerful example of that in Scripture. Nehemiah chapter 8, the people of God have been in captivity. They had been in captivity for 70 harsh years under the Babylonians. Now, they've come out of that captivity as a, as a single unit or group. It looks like this may be one of the first times they've gathered back together to worship. And watch what happens in Nehemiah 8, verses 5 and 6. Nehemiah 8, verses 5 and 6. And Ezra opened the book, that's the law of God, in the sight of all the people. For he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen. While lifting up their hands, they bowed their heads, and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Here's a people who had been a spiritual drought for a long time. Their idolatry led them to captivity. They were in harsh times for 70 years. Ezra now stands up with the law of God. He reads from that and the people shout out, Amen. Why? They knew. They learned the hard way. We need to listen to God and His Word. Friend, when God's Word is read or preached, not only should verbally that come out, but our attitude and our mindset should be, so be it. Absolutely. That's truth, and I want to stand behind it. You know, another way that we should use the word amen, our attitude in prayer should also be amen. So be it, or God grant it. That, you know, probably more than any other time in my life and yours, when we sit down to pray, we say the word amen more than any other word. But that's a good attitude because we want God, so be it, we are asking God to grant these blessings. Look in Matthew 6. Let me show you that that's the attitude we ought to have as it relates to prayer. Matthew chapter 6. Look in verse number 13. Matthew 6. I want you to look in verse number 13. Why do we say amen at the end of a prayer? What do we say? Amen, amen is not the send button on the email, okay? Amen is not the send button to get the prayer to God. That, that's not what we're saying. Amen is we're saying, I need these things. I want these things. These things are true and right, and uh, we believe that, and we stand behind it, and God grant that, please, is what we're saying. Listen to Matthew 6, 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so when we think about this idea as it relates to prayer, my attitude in prayer should be, so be it. Truly, truly, take it to the bank. This is God and His way, and He'll do what's right. Christians ought to have a sense of amen about the constant care and protection of God. That ought to bring us to the point of amen. Matthew 28, verse 20. Uh, some of the last words recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said this, And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So be it. God's constant protection, care, guidance, and concern for me should bring us to the attitude and the point of Amen. So be it. God grant that. Um, the second coming of Christ ought to be worthy of an amen, right? Revelation 1 verse 6 mentions this idea that when Christ comes, the shout of amen is going to be there as well. And so the mindset, the attitude of looking forward to the Lord's coming. When we hear about the Lord's coming, what do we say and what do we do? Uh, the, the Lord could come at any moment. Does that send us into fear? No. We ought to say, Amen. Let it be. We're ready for that day. It's kind of the mindset and the attitude. And then, of course, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus are definitely an Amen subject. Look in your Bible in Revelation chapter 1. And I want you to notice what is said in verse 18. The gospel, the death, the core of it, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus ought to motivate, motivate each one of us 
to the mindset of amen. Revelation 1.18 I am He who lives. There's the life. Was dead. There's the death. And behold, I am alive evermore. Resurrection of Jesus Christ. What does the Holy Spirit say? Amen. Friend, when we think about the gospel, the good news. Jesus said, I've got the keys of death and Hades and men will never have to face that again. They can overcome death and live with me forever. Amen's the attitude. When I think about the, the life of Jesus, look at what He did. He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. He went around doing good. He healed the sick. He fed the, the, the hungry. He helped the poor. He died for my sins and yours. Amen. His death, what a horrible death. Beaten, mocked, spit upon, laughed at, crown of thorns placed on His head, hung and suffered in agony, gave up His life on Calvary for me. That ought to motivate me to an amen. And then the resurrection. Low in the grave He lay, up from the grave He arose. He is not here. He is risen. Aren't those words worthy of a powerful amen today? When I think about the good news of the gospel. You see, here's what it all comes down to. An amen is almost, a, it's almost an involuntary response to a powerful truth. Here's the truth. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Here's the even worse truth. The wages of sin is death. Men who live in sin, die in sin, and commit sin will be lost in the torment of hell forever. But, you will call His name Jesus. Why? He will save His people from their sins. And with that, every one of us it ought to be almost involuntary motivated to say, thank God and amen for the life of Jesus Christ. Friend, are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the gospel? Have you said amen to obedience to the will of God? Do you believe He's the Savior? John 8, verse 24. Would you turn from a life of sin and repentance? Luke 13, 3. Would you make the good confession? He is the Savior, the Son of God. Romans 10, verse 10. And would you do what Jesus said? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, verse 16. And then rising out of that watery grave of baptism to live a life confirmed by amen, be faithful unto death. Revelation 2, verse 10. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more in the Word of God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the